Hey everybody, wanted to make a video how to go over using the FEMA flood max chain viewer. If you got a letter like this in the mail, I'll show you how to go over this part of the process. Before I start, I just want to make it clear that this video is made based on my own personal opinion. This is not an officially sponsored video from FEMA, nor is it sponsored by any kind of flood insurance agency. This is just my own personal opinion on how to use the flood map change viewer. So please consult with proper authorities for legal and other advice. Now to view the flood map change viewer, I recommend you do this on a computer like a PC. It's a large application that's hard to see on a phone. So probably the easiest way to get it would be to type in FEMA flood map change viewer into Google. And this is the link that we received in our letter. So I'm going to click on this one, the preliminary map viewer. And you'll come to this web page and of course, take the time to read this. So I'll hit OK there. Now, here's how it's supposed to work. And then we'll I'll go over the reality of what I saw when putting this together. So it asks you to print a change report. Click the pin tool, click a point on the map, location, click execute. Now the first thing you can do is type in your address. So I'll type in my address here at the upper left of the screen. And when I do that, the map is gonna zoom in. And if everything were to go according to plan, um, I found where my address is I'm interested in. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is actually the current situation with FEMA flood zones. I'm actually not in a flood zone. Now, if I use their tool, I'm supposed to click here on a point, click here on the area that I'm interested in, and you can see there's a little push pin comes out, and then I'm supposed to hit execute to receive a comparison port report. So I'll hit run. And in this case, it actually did work for me. So I'm going to um, click on this to get my PDF file that was produced. And so what this is showing me here on the left is what my current flood zone area is, which area of minimal hazard. I'm current, you know, the effective right now, but here's what's coming. The, what they're calling the preliminary. And this shows that I'm going to go from what's called flood zone X to flood zone AO. And so that's what I'm potentially going to have to now deal with in terms of being a homeowner and my flood insurance. Now, what you could do here is then take this report and print it and send it to your printer to get a hard copy output of this. Now, I just want to quickly go over some other things. Now, just in case you don't see that screen I just had, if you click on this thing here, it's called geo processing, but this is how you can um, do this thing again by clicking this button. So if I want to do a new point, I'll click the clear icon and I can hold my left button down to pan on the map. It, it works just like Google Maps. And let's try another part of the neighborhood. And I'll click another point and run. Now, if you get a situation like this, where previously you saw that everything worked fine, I got a report, I tried it again in a different spot, and it submitted, executed, and failed. Now, that's kind of annoying, but let me show you what you can do to at least still try to understand um, the changes in things here. So I'll clear that point off. I'll close this whole window. And the key thing is, is to look, I'm gonna go back to where my property is located, right around here. Now, if you click on this button here, the layer list, you have a whole bunch of different things happening in the map right now. So I click on this and a basic idea here is you have the map the, what you call the base map, which are the images of the neighborhood or the houses, and you have different layers that are added on top of it. 
So what you can do is start to just uncheck these because this will determine the visibility of things. So I'll start by just unchecking everything. And notice how when I'm doing that, things in the map are changing. So based on what I've learned of these layers, if I click on this one, National Flood Hazard Layer, you can see how it says Zone AE and then Town of Greece, and there's no like blue line over it. These are basically the current, or what they call the effective flood zones. And I believe if you click on that, it'll, it'll give you the name of the flood zone map and when it was established, in this case, 2008. Now, what this tool is supposed to do is show you changes. So if this is what happened in 2008, if I click on this one, preliminary national flood had late, late, later, here's what's coming. So you can see now kind of this checkered area preliminary panel. I can turn off the current flood zones to get a little cleaner view. And this shows me the change in what's being proposed. So this was issued in 2022. So that's the key thing, the preliminary, that's what they're proposing to do. And this is what currently is here. So if you couldn't get the report to work, try changing around these map layers because even just changing this on and off in this neighborhood, you can see it's a pretty significant change that's being proposed as all of the houses on the north side of the street will go from zone X area of minimal impact to being in zone AO. And if you're not familiar really with what flood zones mean, do a little research. Here's a page, FEMA Flood Zones and Maps Explained. And I recommend that you uh, do a little research on that. So again, this video is just my own personal opinion. This is not any sort of official video from FEMA. This is just me trying to show you how to look at changes in flood zone maps. If you have any questions, please leave them as a comment. Thank you. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.